Uh, we're glad that you're joining us uh, now, so uh, welcome. Uh, before Donna prays for the message, uh, I do want to just share one little uh, announcement and get organized here a little bit. Um, a lot of papers here for this. Uh, yeah, just take that. Um, yeah, I wanted to, uh, this is a little, this is an invitation to a partner uh, with us uh, uh, in uh, just an exciting opportunity that, uh, that I'm excited about. Um, I think most of you who will be watching online and those of us that are here uh, realize that part of our call as forerunners in the spirit and the power of Elijah is to partner with God to raise up a, a vessel in these end times who will make ready a people uh, prepared for the Lord, a, a forerunner type of, of, uh, of company of believers and churches and those uh, types of things. And so I think we're all aware of that. And so we've been on that journey for a long time, but we've really uh, initiated a very specific uh, a, a, a challenge or a very specific uh, journey on that in the last year or so. Uh, with the, the Forerunner School that we have started. And so, you, you know, if you, if you look at the different um, people that we're uh, reaching out to with that, we have our local church here, we have the online, uh, people who watch us online on Sunday mornings. Uh, we have the Forerunner School, which is uh, an online school where we're connecting with people really literally all over the world. And it's been a real encouraging time to, to really meet people from other uh, cultures and other places and other countries and those types of things. But the, but the, one, the other group is the pastors in, in Africa. Uh, you know, we have the church transformation project that we're working on, and we've, uh, you know, we just registered about 2,600, a little bit over 2,600 senior pastors that are starting our two-year program uh, there. But we, in addition to that, we have uh, about 25 to 30 uh, regional leaders in the 10 nations uh, that are responsible for registering and mentoring these 2,600 or so pastors plus the other uh, thousands of pastors that have already been through the program. Uh, and so here's the issue or the dilemma that we face with these uh, pastors is that uh, you know, the Forerunner School, where we work with people from America and Canada and uh, Europe and different places, the, the Internet speeds are really good there, and they can connect. They can watch everything online. They can watch the videos. They can do the notes. They can communicate. They can do join our Zoom meetings and all of that very easily. But that's not the case with these 25 or to 30 mentors in, in Africa due to the internet speeds. The internet speeds and the capability of the technology uh, as a whole is just not uh, sufficient there to do the Forerunner School and the training online. Uh, and yet, they have tremendous potential to impact the whole uh, continent of Africa. Uh, they're, they, they have uh, certainly Eastern Africa, Southern Africa, they have opportunity to impact in very, very powerful ways, but they don't have the resources to do that. So that leads me to, the, to what we are challenging uh, you to do, is what we, we are initiating a 30-day project uh, program to raise uh, funds to buy laptops for these uh, 25 to 30 uh, regional leaders. Um, we will then send them the thumb drive that will have the first five classes of the Forerunner School uh, on that, which will have audio, video, and notes. Uh, we'll send that to them. They can put it on their laptop. They can then study uh, on their own, and then we will be able to connect with them through uh, you know, text messages and other kinds of ways, whatever the capability will be. So here's the challenge. Uh, I believe the Lord said to cast the vision for this, uh, that those watching online as well as those that are here, uh, those in the Forerunner School, whoever, uh, have, have opportunity to receive this or hear this, 
would join with us. A, a laptop uh, that's sufficient in uh, capability is a, roughly about $600. Uh, they would purchase it in, Af in Africa. We would send them the money. They would purchase it. Then we would send them the materials to do that. Uh, and so anyway, I want to challenge you to, to partner with us on this. You know, if you put all that together, you're looking at fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in, in, in total amount. Uh, whatever we raise for this, we'll uh, we will just put it towards as many laptops as we can get. Uh, Doug is feverishly working now on getting the thumb drive ready with all the videos and all the data there. We have five classes completed now and those will be the ones we'll send over. So anyway, we want to give you the opportunity to partner with us on this. You can write a check to Life School and mail it to us if you're local or in the states or whatever. If you want to give online, you can do that. Just go to lifeschoolinternational.org uh, and click on the donate button and they'll give you an opportunity even to select the correct campaign and you can give the 600 online. And so 100% of that will go out to uh, to purchase these laptops of that what we receive over this next month. You know, the, to the American church and the Western church, much has been given, you know, much has been given. And, you know, Jesus said to him who much has been given, much is required. And uh, so we love our African brothers and they, they are a tremendous uh, blessing to us. They have a heart for God and you know, that's part of the part of the world the Lord has called us to minister to more than any other. And so we want to be faithful to that. And so anyway, join with us, if you would, on that. LifeSchoolInternational.org, uh, uh, and you can give online uh, to this. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the plug for that. And now my beautiful wife is going to lead us in uh, prayer. Okay. Father, we do bow our hearts before you and... We're just so grateful that we can just come to you at all times. And we just even thank you for, for what you're doing, even in this hour, Lord. And we, t we pray today that you would truly open up the eyes of our heart to see, to hear what you were saying, Lord. Just as Ken has this word about not denying your name, we pray, Father, that you would arise within him, Lord God, and that you would speak, Father, not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And and Lord, we pray that that sharp two-edged sword would come forth out of his mouth and it would bring division between the soul and the spirit, that we would truly hear in our spirit what you were saying in this lord god that we would truly hear and recognize the hour that we are in lord god that you would even release a real divine seriousness would even come forth lord god yes, we cry yes. out for a divine seriousness to come to each and every heart those who hear those who are here lord god we cry out for that divine seriousness, God, which is the grand master key to make spiritual progress in you. And we ask that you speak mightily to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to share a word that, uh, uh, that the Lord uh, gave me uh, back a few weeks ago. Um, and I believe it is a, a word that we need to... Uh, to heed uh, a, a word, uh, a prophetic word, and, and the title of it, as Donna prayed, is uh, Preparing to Not Deny Christ, Preparing to Not Deny Christ. Um, I've been, I think I, I shared this when I did a, a message a, a month or so ago, and uh, I, I think I shared this, that I've been recently studying uh, really the book of Revelation as it relates to the bride, not the total uh, everything in the book, but as it relates to the bride. I'm writing a class for our forerunner school called uh, A Theology of the Bride. Uh, and uh, one of the sessions, or two of the sessions actually, will be the bride in the book of Revelation. And I'll deal with, with the, the, what the, the different passages in the book of Revelation say about the bride and and the bride making herself ready and all of those things. And so in preparation and study of that, for the last couple of months, I've been studying primarily Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3. 
you know, there's a lot, you know, that's the Jesus' messages to the seven churches of Revelation. And, you know, he has a lot of things. I have this against you, and there's the call to overcome, and there are rewards associated with those uh, overcoming uh, issues. And so not all, but some of those related to, uh, to bridal. And, and, for example, in the church, the message to the church at Philadelphia, it says, if you overcome... Uh, I'll, I'll put the, the name of, my, of the city, uh, the New Jerusalem, on you, which is that, you know, it says in Revelation 21 that that's the bride coming down out of heaven. So, you know, some of those are, are, are several of those are bridal in nature. Um, but this is not, this message is really not so much about the bride. But what the Lord has been doing is I've been studying this. Uh, he has dropped in my spirit uh, really so far three little nuggets. When I say little nuggets, I mean they didn't take that long to receive them, but it, it may be a lifetime to be obedient to them. So they're not little in terms of what he's saying. But he's dropped those into me, and, and they're like a prophetic, a prophetic challenge to us uh, to respond to these things and to be obedient uh, to these things. And, you know, the first one that I got, that which I shared uh, back early in January, was fear God and fear nothing else. Fear God and fear nothing else. Uh, and, you know, that, I believe, is a crucial mindset. These things are, are important because, I, and I'll share some of the reasons here as I get into the message more. But we're at, a, we're at a crucial time in history. And these things are, are things that it's, it's not sufficient to just say, okay, nice message or whatever kind of a message uh, and just forget about them. We need to incorporate these things into our lives. We need to incorporate them into our walk. And we're getting to, we're in a, in a situation where the Lord is saying, you need to fear me and not fear anything else. And, when, and obviously we're, there are times when we're afraid. I'm not saying we'll never be afraid. But here's, what the, here's the key that the Lord gave me with that message was do not make decisions based on fear. Make your decisions based on the fear of me. Okay? That's, a real, that's an important issue that we're facing. Because, you know, we've already seen, uh, and, and this is not an anti-vax statement I'm going to make. You make your own decisions on the vaccinations. But there are issues where they're saying, if you don't take the vaccination, then you can't work. Or if you don't take it, you can't shop. You know, it's worse maybe in certain parts of the world than it is here. If you don't take the vaccination, you can't do this. You can't do that. Now, so people are doing that not because they feel the Lord's saying to take the vaccination. They're doing it because they're afraid if they don't do it, what will happen to them, the consequences of not doing that. And so that's just an example. But other things are going to come down the, come down the, the road that are going to put us into a situation where we are the, the, the elite, the government, the situations that are happening in the earth are going to put us in situations where we're going to be challenged with, uh, I have to do this. I have to do that. And ultimately, it's going to come to the, the standpoint of standing with Christ. And see, he's going to say, you know, you have to, you have to believe this or you have to state this, that it, this is okay in our... And so we can't make decisions based on the, the fear of what that decision will be. We fear God and nothing else. That was one message that he gave me from these, uh, these messages to Revelation. Then the other day, he gave, I'm, I'm kind of leading up to the one I want to talk about today. The second one, he said, uh, was, it was this was a, a stern it wasn't corrective to me, but it was almost like a command as a forerunner. He, and he said, 
I'm, and these are the words that I wrote in my journal. It says, I'm getting, this is the Lord saying to me, I'm fed up with what's going on in the world. I'm coming. And then it was like, prepare the bride. That was, it was like a, it was like a, a command, prepare the bride. And my response could only be, yes, sir. It was that type of uh, authority he was spoken. spoken. And there's a lot more that we could say about that, but that may be for another time. But then this was the one that he spoke to me, uh, the third one, and maybe the most recently, recent one, was prepare the people not to deny me. Prepare the people to not deny me. Um, and that's what I want to talk about uh, today. So let me, let me read. There's a little bit of reading today in the scripture, but I think it'd be good to, to do that. Let me, first, let me just read the, uh, this is the word that I wrote in my journal when he, when he told me that. Let me read that first. It said, I think the Holy Spirit is preparing us for pressure, for the pressure to conform to a global religious system. And I think that's what's coming down the road at some point. I mean, I hope all this is wrong, you know. I hope we can just go to Disney World and have fun. and You know, that's kind of what I like. But, <laughs> you know, go to ball games and, uh, you know, all that. Uh, but anyway... If this is right, here's, this is what the Lord is saying. I think the Holy Spirit is preparing us for pressure to conform to a global religious system. Make a determined decision in your heart. Make a determined decision in your heart not to deny the name of Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. That, connecting it with that verse. There is a sword being released into the earth right now to wake up purify and prepare the church. There is coming uh, pressure toward a one world religion where you can't say Jesus is the only way plus there will be pressure along with this to, to not stand on truth, biblical truth. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is life even if confessing him costs a quality of life. The pressure will be that there are many ways versus one way and that there are many truths versus one truth. Denying these things before men will cause Jesus to deny us before the Father and will cause our name to be erased from the book of life. Prepare your heart now to not deny Christ and to confess him when the need arises. Do not deny, prepare your heart not to deny Christ and to confess him when the need arises. Um, that's what I wrote, you know, whether it's right or not, that's, but that's what I wrote. Now, let me, let me read uh, where I got this from. I was, this, is, this came from the messages to Philadelphia and the messages to Sardis. Um, to Phil, let me read Philadelphia. He is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and shuts and no one opens, says this. I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut because you have a little power and here you have kept my word and have not, you have not denied my name. You have not denied my name. Uh, you know, the, I've read these, ver these messages to the seven churches for decades now uh, and, uh, you know, you, he's like, okay, I'm not going to deny your name. But then you, when you put it in the pressures of the end times, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. This puts it in a whole different light. When the governments and the, and the, the world systems are going to say, are saying you cannot, you cannot accept or speak of Christ as the only way. And so this church message to Philadelphia says, you do not deny my name. Because the whole book of Revelation is set in the pressures of the end times. 
in that pressure, you kept my word and you didn't, and you have not denied my name. And then and it goes on, but let me go to, let me go to 10. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. And then he says, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar uh, in the temple of my God. And he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on him, again, name, and you do not deny my name. So I'll write on the one who does not deny the name. I'll write the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name, who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So one of the challenges to the church at Philadelphia uh, and not, it wasn't necessarily a challenge to them. They had done this. It was a challenge to us is to not deny the name of Christ. Now, then, now to the church at Sardis. He who has seven, the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die, for I have not found your deeds completed or satisfactory really in the sight of my God. So remember what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and I will, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments and they walk with me in white for they are worthy. And then he says this, he who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments and I will not erase his name from the book of life. Now, that's a challenging verse of scripture. I don't know exactly. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to get into all that right now. But, and I will, here's what I want you to hear. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. And so when I, when I saw those two together, this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, don't deny my name. And when you have an opportunity, confess my name before people. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what might happen, consequences, don't deny my name. Confess it when necessary, but do not deny my name. Uh, and so there's a challenge, there's a challenge going out to the church right now to prepare right now so that we don't deny the name of Christ uh, as the pressures around us come, in, to come up to cause us to want to do these things. Now, there's, I just kind of jotted down five movements. Now, not all of these would cause us to deny the name of Christ. But what I sense, well, here's what I sense is happening. I sense that the, I, whether the, the elite of the earth or whoever is creating all this on purpose or whether the devil is creating it and the people don't have a clue what's going on, I'm not sure. But there's several things that are happening that I believe are creating kind of like a, an invisible cage for the people of the earth that will lead us to have to either confess Christ or deny him re religiously in, in, in terms of religious th issues that are coming uh, into the earth. And, and I believe that something's gonna, something is on the verge of happening in this decade. I don't know what it is. I don't know, but I sense an urgency in my own heart, in my own spirit. I sense an urgency to make the church ready, to stand in the midst of all this. And, and again, I would love to be wrong on all of this. I would love to be wrong and nothing, none of this happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, everything would go on like it always has, but I don't really believe that's going to be the case. Now, let me, let me just mention these five, five movements. First one, the government is attempting to take away our freedoms. 
Again, these aren't all related to the confessing Christ, but they're creating a kind of like a structure or an environment uh, where, where the denying or confessing Christ would fit into. The government's trying to take away our freedoms. Uh, and, you, you know, you see it, all you have to do is watch the news. And, and the, the, the exciting thing is that, you know, people are beginning to stand up to that. You know, the, uh, the, in Canada and Ottawa and all that's going on there, there's a massive thing that took place in Australia the other day and other kind of uh, protests uh, against these attacks on our freedom. Stephen, who's here back in the back, went to Washington, D.C. a couple of weeks ago to the mandate uh, the, uh, the march there and all that. So we, you know, he, uh, you know, we're, so we're standing against it, but there's pressure, but you know, there's pressure to try to take away our freedoms. And there's, a, there's this tension there. Uh, the second thing that's happening there, there are voices that are trying to censor other voices that don't agree with the mindsets of the, of the elites and the corporate agenda and the corporate giants. You know, things like censoring on Facebook and YouTube and Spotify and, uh, you know, issues like that. There's a censorship going on of voices that they don't agree with. The third one, the government is coming against citizens uh, falsely accusing people of domestic terrorism. Just be, watch, keep an eye out for that phrase, domestic terrorism terrorism. Uh, now, there's a lot, you know, the, the, the issue that's kind of the forefront of that right now is the January 6th, uh, a, you know, a, assault or protest or whatever you want to call it on the Capitol. Uh, it, I'm not saying that was a right thing for them to do. I'm not saying that. But they're using that, they're using the, that as a, as a, a way of uh, of highlighting this idea of domestic terrorism. I mean, if you begin to do a little bit of study in it, you know, people that did hardly anything in there, they, they did trespass on there, and, but they didn't do any damage. They didn't do, they were only in there even for maybe 15 to 20 minutes. They've been uh, kept in, in, in jail in solitary, a lot of them in solitary confinement for months and they're delaying that. And there's a, there is a, the term domestic terrorism are, is being used. Now, what, what, regardless of what you believe about January 6th, that's not the issue. The issue is creating that environment of calling people domestic terrorists, and one day they're going to say, well, the people that believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, they're domestic terrorists. So, you know, that's, that's coming that's on the horizon. Uh, again, hopefully it won't go there, but I think there's a, uh, there's a, a great potential that they're headed that way uh, with that. Uh, there, there's attempts to take away free and fair elections that are going on right now. Uh, you know, we just, I, I won't go into all the different issues there, but there are attempts to take away free and fair elections so that the, the, the people who have this globalist agenda and all that can be elected. Uh, and then there's also fi the final one. There are attempts to take away free speech as it relates to biblical issues. They're beginning to take away free speech as it, begins to, as it affects religious issues. You know, we've seen a little bit of you know, testimony about, you know, they did this to John MacArthur. Uh, they did this to this pastor in Canada. They did this here. They did this over there. But there is, a, there is an attempt going on right now to create that environment uh, where there's not freedom. And we're talking about expressing Christ now. All these, a lot of these other things are not directly related to that, but they're part of it. They're part of the environment that's being raised up that will come against our ability to, to gather in the name of Jesus, to confess him as the way, the truth, and the life, 
and that there's no, no other way to the Father except through Jesus. That's, what, that's, the, that's where it's headed uh, as it relates to the church. That's where it's headed. And so we have to be prepared. <coughs> we have to be prepared not to deny the name of Christ. We want him to confess our name before the Father and before his angels. We want that, and you, you want that. Uh, but it's not, it's not easy, so easy to not even pay any attention to it, and then all of a sudden you're, begun, you're faced with these huge issues and, and tremendous consequences, and you haven't dealt with it in your heart. And the Lord is saying to us right now, he's saying to his church right now, you must deal with this in your heart. Because there could be, very easily could be really bad consequences. You know, it could be, uh, you know, as much as being taken, you know, as little as being taken off YouTube. Uh, or it could, you know, mean that, you know, you lose your ability, your license or whatever, your uh, nonprofit status. It could be things like that. Or it could be, you know, you're going to go to jail if you don't do this. Now, one thing the Lord told me to say, because I think there's a natural tendency to say, whew, I'm glad I'm not a pastor because I don't have to worry with that, you know, that one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not saying the pastors won't be the, on the forefront of that. But the Lord said to tell me, don't think just because you're not a pastor, you're not going to have to deal with this. Yeah, it's to all of us. It's to all of us that have to deal with it. Uh, and the Lord is saying, do not deny my name. I want to read uh, I print out these scripture verses because uh, I can print them in a bigger font. Uh, <laughs> the old reading the, my Bible the font gets smaller every year. I don't know why, why that is. But <laughs> read a size 16 or 14. I can read them with my glasses, if without the glasses I can't. But um, all right, let, let's re, let's read Luke twelve, uh, eight through twelve. And I say, cause remember to the uh, church at Sardis, he said, "I'll confess you before the Father and before the angels." Luke twelve, eight through twelve. And I say to you, everyone who confesses me before men, the Son of Man will confess him before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. Uh, so th that's enough of, of that one. Um, I may have to get to, let's see. Got all my papers here kind of mixed up a little bit. Let me go to my Bible for this because I, I want to. I want to turn to Matthew chapter ten. Um, I didn't print out enough scripture here. Matthew chapter ten. Starting with verse five or so, even the first of the chapter. But what, what's happening here? I won't re read all of this. But what's happening here is that Jesus is sending the twelve out. Uh, into the world, and he says, you know, you're going out, uh, you know, as a sheep among wolves, you're going out, and he gives them all kind of uh, guidance in, in Matthew 10, uh, but, he, but he basically says, okay, when you do this, you know, when you go out like this, you're going to get a lot of opposition. You're gonna, you know, people are not going to like what you're saying. People are not going to like the fact that you are coming against their, their system and speaking about Jesus being the only way, the only truth, the only life. And so you look at that, uh, you know, and he talks about that you'll be hated by all on my account, you'll be persecuted uh, because of me. But then he says, a disciple is not above his teacher uh, and a slave and not ab above the master. Uh, and so anyway, it goes on to verse 32. You ought to read this whole chapter, Matthew chapter 10. 
But he says, he says in verse 31, Therefore do not fear, you are more of more value than the sparrow, than many sparrows. And then he says, Everyone therefore who shall confess me before men, I will confess them before the Father who is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny him before the Father in, who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Uh, and it goes on there. But the point I want you to hear here is that, you know, Jesus was sending the 12 out into the world, into, a, into an environment where the people did not agree with what they were saying. Some did. You know, one thing that I think will happen as this invisible cage is built up, there'll be, uh, there'll be people who will rise up and, the, and a great revival will take place at the same time. So it's not going to be all bad. It's going to be a lot of good, too. Good, a lot, multitudes, I believe, will be coming to, to Christ. God, you just look at, the, look at the truckers in Ottawa that, that, that's going on there. The government's trying to, to shut them down, but the more they try to shut them down, the, the bigger the whole thing gets. And now it's spreading uh, uh, all over the world. It's coming to America. It's already in Australia. It's different places. They're having, you know, uh, you know trucker strike, I mean, you know, trucker uh, protests now. And I believe if you put that into, move that into a kind of a spiritual environment, the more they try to shut down true Christianity, revival's going to break out all over the world, and then, they'll, you know, they'll not be able to stop it. But it won't be, I mean, but they... It won't be like they'll say, okay, let's just relax and let the church be what it wants to be. There'll be opposition there, and that's where we have to take that, uh, that stand. Uh, but Jesus said that in the midst of these 12 going out. He said, I'm sending you out into a difficult situation. Don't deny me before men. And confess me when you have opportunity. So see, you know, and then the Lord gave me in the, in the word, he gave me John 14, 6. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, what, are the, what is the world trying to say? There are many ways. What do you, well, you know, who do you think you are that Jesus is the only way? Islam is a way. Hinduism is a way. Judaism, apart from Christ, is a way. There are many, many, many ways. And when we say, and they say, you can't, are you saying, this government say, it comes to you, say, are you saying that Jesus is the only way? Yes, yes that's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> and they're going to say, get those handcuffs on. I, I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know. But that's what, but that's where we are. We're not, we're, that's where we're headed. We're not there now. So we can't deny, we can't just say, is that a jail cell over there? <laughs> no, you know, really, there, there might be other ways, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> you can't say, you can't do that. You got to say, no, look, this is what scriptures believe. I believe this. Jesus is the only way. He's the only door into heaven. He's the only one. So you don't deny him. Now, I'm not saying you go before, you know, bust into Congress and start preaching in the rotunda, <laughs> but it. <laughs> But if you, you know, if you don't, you don't deny it, and when you are challenged there, you confess him, what, it, what he says, you know. Unless, the Lord tells you. Unless yeah, yeah, right, right. If the Lord tells you to go, he'd probably tell you, Shelly, to go in third time and not me. <laughs> she would, I know it, I know. <laughs> she would do it, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's, the world's going to say there are many ways, and we, and we believe there's one way. The world's also going to say there's many truths. Yeah. You're, you're saying 
that homosexual marriage is not not in God's plan? You're saying that abortion is not a woman's right? That's right. We are. I am. I'm saying both of those things are not in God's plan. You know, there's one truth. Jesus is truth. All this other stuff is not truth. But you're going to, you you know, the the homosexual agenda is going to become, I think, in years ahead, a major challenge to the church. So we've got to be prepared to not deny what Christ says. We've got to stand on truth. Now, th- this is a little side note, but we, I mean, we have a love for people who struggle with homosexuality. We're not against, we're not against people who, who are homosexuals. But we're saying, you know, don't think that God approves of it. It's that there's a challenge to come out of it or to restrain from it. And it's a lot more than we, we can talk about right now. But, but we're not against the people, but we, we stand on the truth of the scriptures. That Jesus is the way, he is the truth. He is the truth. And his word is the truth. Now here, and this is where going to, the challenge is going to come. He is the life. Jesus is the life. He is life. His, he is life, and he giving us life is more important than us hanging on to our earthly life. Yeah. Now, I know it's easier probably for me to say it at my age than maybe to, you know, some of the younger ones who's, you know, you know how long you'll be here. But, but Jesus is the life. The life. You know, are we going to hang on? He who loves his life loses it. You know, if you if you hang on to your earthly life, you'll lose life, real life. You'll lose eternal life. I mean, maybe you won't lose heaven or hell, but you'll lose the maximum amount of reward that you can get. To be in in, a, in in intimacy and partnership with Jesus through all of eternity, He is the life, and so th- this is a, this is a real challenge to the church. We've got to lay down. You know, Jesus said this. We've got to lay down our life and follow Him, take up His life, and as we do that, even if we're challenged with whatever. You know, whatever may come our way, even if we're challenged with these things, consequences of whatever they might be, we've got to hang on to the life of Christ. It's Christ as life. He is the life. And he gives me life. You know, he said to the group of Sardis, I'll not erase your name from the book of life. I can't say that I know, I understand all that that means. But I do know this. I don't want to find out. Yeah. I want to, I want to confess him before men so that he confesses me before the Father and before angels. Yeah. Happy Super Bowl Sunday with John the Baptist. <laughs> You know, I I wish we didn't have to share all these things. I wish we weren't living in a time when that uh, has happened. But, you know, unfortunately, I think we are. A couple more points, a few more points I want to make here. Here's some, here's some ways that we can prepare ourselves uh, to not deny Christ. 
Uh, first one, I've, I've already said, don't, do not think that the opposition and the pressure will only be directed at pastors and leaders. It will impact everyone. The second one, which I've talked about too, look, at, look to Jesus as life, both now and forever. Here, I'm faced with whatever the world might try to do to my life over here then I have this promise of real life, eternal life, life, abundant life. Okay, don't choose that life, choose this one. Work that in your, in your heart right now. I'm living, I'm living for Christ. I'm living for his life. He is eternal life. I'm living for him because he is life now and forever. That's the second point. point. To put in your heart. The third one, know why these messages to the seven churches are in the book of Revelation. This is, this is an important one. You know, when I, I used to read these, I guess this is more when back when we were in the Baptist church and we believed in pre-tribulation rapture and you wonder, okay, this is interesting, but uh, what, I don't under, you know, why did he put this messages to the churches and all this about the problems and all this is going to happen. I don't know if you've ever thought that or not, but I used to think that. But now you look at it in the context of we're not going to be taken out of here. Uh, and, you know, he's given us this, this whole book. And, and what, is it, <coughs> what does he do? He says, first he says, okay, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. But then he goes into a revelation of him and his uh, glory. A sword coming out of his mouth, you know, eyes like fire, you know, all that in chapter one. This is in chapter one. He said, it's like, look, look. He says, you think, and Brian, Brian talked about it last week about it from Psalm two. You think these guys, these, these guys that think they're ruling the world, said, I, I created the universe. Yeah. I, <laughs> I can eliminate them, you know, in a second. And he's, he's revealing himself to us, you know. And then after that, he says, okay, this is who I am. He said, this is what you have to go through. This is what I want you to deal with. Re Revelation 2 and 3, chapters 2 and 3. And there's some real issues that we have to really deal with in there. Uh, you know, one of the things I wrote in, uh, it's in the, the bride, being the bride class, it's like, the different views about overcoming. And we won't go into all that. But these are things we have to deal with. We have to deal with. And then in session four, and chapters four and five, he gives us a, a view of heaven. He says the throne, you know, and all the throne and, uh, and how Christ is the center of the throne. And it's all around this man, Christ Jesus. And there's, everyone is worshiping this man, Christ Jesus. He's given us a vision of all that. And then he goes, 6 through 18, he gives us all the, the different uh, problems that we're going to have to go through. He said, okay, this is what's, what's going to happen before I come back. But look at heaven. Look at who I am. You're going to be there. So deal with this stuff. And then it, after 18, he says, okay, this is, the dest this is your destiny. The bride, the, Jew the new Jerusalem coming down to earth, the millennial reign of Christ, all that. This is your destiny. And so what is, what is he saying? We need, we need to understand this. We need to understand, one, Christ is a lot more powerful than these people on the earth. They might be able to burn and to destroy our body. But he says, I am the one who can destroy the body and send you, you to hell. Amen. And so follow me. Yeah. So get yourself ready. And this is what is happening in the earth. But look at the goal. Look at, the, look at eternity. Wow. Look at who I am. Look at eternity. Live for me. Don't deny him. So we need, to, we need that parameter and perspective there on that. Uh, that was the third one. I got two more, and then I'll be finished. Uh, 
Determine in your heart now that you will not compromise but, and you will not deny Christ and you will confess him as the way, the truth, and the life when necessary, when, when, you, when there's an opportunity. Deter, now, this is the key. Determine that now, now, while there's opportunity to do that. You don't want to. You don't want to wait until, you know, there's a guillotine or whatever there, and you either now or, or then you may try to make that decision. Then make it now. Work it out in your heart now. And then the fifth one: pray now for God's grace to be sufficient, not to deny Christ. That's really important. That we, you know, because His grace, He says, His grace will be sufficient. It's made perfect in our weakness. It, you know, I've heard a lot of different stories about this, is that when people are faced with different things, that the grace of God comes on them in, a, in a, just a real supernatural, powerful way that's not there when, when you're not in one of those situations. But pray now and ask God, Lord, God, God if all this is going to happen, if the decade we're living in really could get difficult. I want grace. I want your grace to be sufficient for me. Give me the ability, Lord, not to deny you in those days ahead, whatever that may mean. Amen. Uh, you can, can you mean to cut off the, uh, yeah, let me, in, uh, hang on one second. Uh, let, we, we want to, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll have some ministry here locally or whatever uh, the Lord leads. Uh, but we thank you for those who uh, watched online and we really appreciate everything that uh, you're doing. And if you're watching online, we'd love for you to participate in the, uh, uh, in the purchase of the laptops uh, as well. So. Amen. God bless. Amen. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You want to?